the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's something special about the uh, sunrise, isn't there? Just seeing it come up. And uh, I'm going to watch it and uh, be with my screen there a little bit. <laughs> you can see uh, just popping up there. And uh, thank you for joining me for uh, Worship the Lord number 210. <laughs> Oh, I see the sun shining off the side of my face. Good, you can't see my whiskers. I didn't shave. Uh, hardly comb my hair. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8, 10 in part says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you that you made that sun to rise. Well, really, you made the earth to go around the sun. And uh, we just thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that you created this world. May we never forget it, your greatness, how tremendous you are. And when we see your greatness in your creation, how you created the trees and the world and the sky and the stars and the billions and billions of stars and you know them all by name. You know every hair that's on our head. Lord God, I'm making it easier for you as the years go by, aren't I? Lord, when we see how great you are, our problems shrink. Because when we live in this life with you, O oh Lord God, uh, we can go through a storm. We can go through anything, Lord God, because you tell us in your scriptures, Philippians 4.13, you tell us. And we can say this as your children, Jesus. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And everything you desire for our life, Lord God, we can be and we can accomplish through your help and strength. We thank you for that, Lord God. You give us breath. You give us a heartbeat. We praise, praise you. And when we see the, the cross of you, Jesus, on the cross for us, and know your great love for us, God. That, Father, you would give your only Son to die for us on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And you would raise from the dead, Jesus. You would be raised from the dead. You would come from the dead, defeat death, that we would never die and never be separated from, from you. And that you could give us the Holy Spirit to live in us, you living in us, now and forever. And we thank you for that, that someday we will live with you in your kingdom. That will be brighter than that sun. <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to see your face shining like the sun in full strength. We praise you and thank you. Amen. Now, for a man who did see Jesus Christ as he walked on this earth, and someday we'll see him as his children, believers in him, uh, but the man who did see him and touched him before he was crucified and after he was crucified touched Jesus, touched his resurrection body. He wrote this some years later. And it's, uh, in, it, we call it First John, First John, the book of First John in the Bible. The words of the apostle John. Chapter 1 I begin with, I'm going to read portions of his Bible, his scripture. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, Jesus the life was made manifest concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, 
so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. <laughs> you really want to know joy, complete joy. It's only found in God, in Jesus Christ. This is the message we have heard from him, from Jesus, and proclaim to you that God is light. He made that light. He is light. Oh, God. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a classic verse to remember, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful, God, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to make us clean, that we would not feel guilty, but we would be, feel clean before God to serve him and love him. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Chapter 2, My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He speaks in our behalf, the Son does, before the Father in our behalf, when Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And I'm going to read the English Standard Version Study Bible Notes on propitiation. Greek word he, that was actually originally used by John that's been translated into English that I could read. <laughs> but originally John spoke this in Greek. And he used for propitiation the word hilasmos. Here means a sacrifice that bears God's wrath and turns it to favor. Again, propitiation, the Greek word that the Apostle John actually originally wrote in and spoke in is this word, hilasmos. Here means a sacrifice that bears God's wrath and turns it to favor. Jesus Christ was the sacrifice for our sins, for he bore our sins. He bore the, the sins of the world were laid on him. And that is also the meaning of the English word propitiation. I can also look at Romans 3.25, and Lord willing, I'll get there soon and talk about the word propitiation used in those scriptures. As the perfect sacrifice for sin, Jesus, the perfect sacrifice for sin, because he was God, he was sinless, he was totally righteous, he was God. And he was also man, so that he could bear the sins, the, the sins of the world could be laid on him. As the perfect sacrifice for sin, 
Jesus turns away God's wrath. For the sins of the whole world, that's the scripture said, does not mean that every person will be saved. For John is clear that forgiveness of sins comes only to those who repent and believe the gospel. The gospel. What is the gospel? Forgiveness of sins only comes to those who believe the gospel. And the gospel message clearly is presented, I believe, in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Enjoy the warm sun. Oh, I can start, start to feel the heat from that sun. Oh, hallelujah. We need to believe this, the gospel, the good news, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead and believe it. Turn away from our sins and turn to him. That's why 1 Corinthians 15 begins like this. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel. Okay, I preach to you. This is the Apostle Paul talking this time. Remind you of the gospel I preach to you, which you received. These people received it. In which you stand. And by which you are being saved. Okay, saved from hell. Saved from the wrath of God. Hell is the wrath of God upon sin. Jesus saves us from that when we believe in the gospel. We believe this about Jesus. We believe him. Okay, you're saved. This is the gospel. You believe, these people believed, and they're saved. And what did they believe? Verse 3, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. He, the Apostle Paul delivered to them the gospel. And that is this, that Christ died for our sins. That's why we first read in 1 John, you must recognize that you're a sinner. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord, as the Son of God, and as your Lord and Savior, that's a sin in itself. But to not live as God made us to live, that's a sin. And we need to confess that we have that sin in our life. And that's why it says, For I deliver to you as of first importance what I have also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, he was dead, we need to believe, he, he died for our sins, we turn away from our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, the, the word of God foretold that, that he was buried, he was dead, that he was raised, that he rose from the dead, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that's what we need to believe to be forgiven of our sins. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So, back here. And uh, I go back to the notes in First John. Study notes, it says, this I continue on. Forgiveness. John is clear that forgiveness of sins comes only to those who repent. That means a change of mind, have a change of mind. It means a change of direction in our, in our life. Meaning we turn away from sin. We recognize we're a sinner. And we turn away from sin and we turn toward Jesus to follow him. We turn toward Jesus as the one who died for our sins, took the penalty for our sins upon his body on the cross. He was killed. He endured the wrath of God. Thank you, Jesus. You endured the wrath of God for our sins upon your body. And you were killed for our sins. But that wasn't it, that you rose from the dead, Jesus, to live today, to live in us through the Holy Spirit, and to... to Give us eternal life with you now and forever and, 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 and give us life with you now forever and joy and peace with, with God and you, you forever, Lord. We thank you for that. So, here again, 
For John is clear that forgiveness of sins comes only to those who repent and believe the gospel. I just read the gospel. 1 John, not 1 John, 1 Corinthians 15. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15. All right. But Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice is offered and made available to everyone. That's what, 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 what the Apostle John is getting saying here. It's made it possible for everyone to come to, to Jesus. He offers himself for everyone. All the sins of the world were laid on him. So everyone in the whole world has the opportunity to believe the gospel, to believe in Jesus Christ doing this for them on the cross, dying and rising from the dead. Everyone has that possibility, whether they choose to believe that or not, whether they believe that, whether they receive that gift that the Father gave of His Son, it makes all the difference because if they, if one does not receive that gift, believe that gift, and repent of their sins, and believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, in their place, rose from the dead, was killed. Jesus was killed and rose from the dead. If they, if they don't receive that gift, then they do not have forgiveness of sins, but it's offered to everyone. Okay. Sacrifice offered and made available to everyone in the whole world, not just to John and his current readers. And, and that's love. And I, I want to quickly go to 1 John chapter 4. And is these words again. Beloved, let us love one another for love. This is uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. He determines what love is. He helps us to have the right loves in our life when we come to Him, because He is love. He defines love. He is, love is not God. You can't say it that way. The Greek, actually, the way that it's written here, doesn't allow you to do that. It's clear that God is love. God determines what love is. And that's why we need to be with God and know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because he is God, Jesus, and he will guide us into the right love to have in our life. What is love? Because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. That's how you can live and I can live through him. For he indwells us when we believe that in him is our Lord and Savior, the God, Lord, and Savior who saves us from hell, gives us forgiveness of our sins. He comes in us and makes us able to live. Don't give up. You can live through him because it, this is the word of God says it so that we might live through him because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And again, the study notes say this. Uh, not that we have loved God. What does this mean? God's love sets the standard for the love Christians are called to embody. Propitiation. Sin brings divine wrath. On the cross, Jesus bore that wrath for our sins. And that's made clear in that scripture. 1 John 2. He, Jesus, he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
propitiation, a sacrifice that bears God's wrath and turns it to favor. And that is also the meaning of the English word propitiation. As the perfect sacrifice for sin, Jesus turns away God's wrath. Again, propitiation. A sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus. That bears the wrath of God for our sins. And turns God's wrath away from us and makes God favorable towards us, gives us peace with God. That's what Jesus did on the cross. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I just thank you for that son. <laughs> I, you are the son of God. I thank you for you. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we praise you and thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. You came from glory from heaven, from your presence with the Father, and you died a miserable death on the cross, bearing our sin. And that's why you said, Jesus, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because you were abandoned by the Father, Father God, at that moment on the cross. For the Father abandoned you, Jesus, on the cross when you bore our sins in your body. You took the wrath of God for us. You were abandoned by God so that we would not be abandoned by God, but that we would be forgiven by God because you suffered the penalty for our sin with your crucifixion, your death on the cross. You were the substitute for our life on the cross. You took the penalty of wrath, of death for us, Lord Jesus, on that cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. When we believe, Jesus, you took the penalty for our sin, and we believe that you rose from the dead, and we make you our Lord, our God, we follow you, Jesus, with our life. We turn away from our, our sins. We repent. We turn away from our sins in our life. Whatever they are, Lord, we turn away from them and we turn to you, Jesus, to follow you as the risen Lord and Savior who died in the cross in our place, died for our sins, endured the wrath of God for our sins to make peace with God and give us forgiveness of all of our sins so that you could live in us through the Holy Spirit. We thank you you've done this and we can live. We, as your scripture says, we live through you. And we thank you for that. We never walk alone. You will never leave us or forsake us. And someday you will bring us into your presence, into glory forever. With all of our loved ones have already gone to be with you in heaven. <laughs> oh God, I look forward to that day. I do miss my mom and dad. And all my loved ones. My sister. And all my loved ones that have gone there. To be with you. But I thank you. You're keeping them safe. <laughs> Is safe with you. Follow and forever. Praise you, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for being with me. Rejoice in the Lord in His truth that He loves you. Love Him. Believe in Him always. For He is, he is God. Jesus, the Son of God, is God the Son. <laughs> Amen. He is in control. Amen. Thank you for being with me.